So I'm here with an old friend of the, the Unshackled, the, the organiser of the, the Ballarat premiere of Unplanned, Diane Colbert. Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And thank you for, for organising this. Now, uh, Ballarat, it's, it's a regional uh, centre, but it was, and this was in the middle of the day, so a lot of people are at work, but it was a, still a good turnout. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with how many attended. It was good to see so many people making it a priority to come today. Uh, like I've always said, it's it's quite disheartening being a pro-life activist in Australia, given all the, the laws that have been passed that legalise abortion up until birth and then the, the exclusion zones. It's, it's It seems a very difficult task to sort of break what is seen as the, the pro-abortion consensus. Yeah, I guess one of the things that I've been thinking about as this movie came was how many women have been suffering from post-abortion grief and even some men who have had no choice. Um, they know that their baby has been aborted and they suffer grief at the loss of their child. And there's almost like no place to have the conversation of how do I heal from this trauma, from this grief. And so I was just thinking about that, which is a little bit different to the whole movie Unplanned, which, you know, the main theme is for people to understand what really happens in the abortion industry, you know, that, that it is a profit-making industry and often the truth is not told to people. So I really hope this movie does well in Australia because I think people need to know the truth. It's only the truth that sets people free from, from the lies of a lobby group that says, no, this is fine, when actually it's not fine. You're right. It's an untold story. And there's a lot, uh, like, like you said, there's a lot of people who are suffering trauma because of their experience with uh, abortion. One thing I've been pleased about in Australia is the, the promotional campaign uh, about this movie. There's, I've seen a lot on Facebook, which would surprise a, a, lot, of, a lot of people. There's been a good campaign to, to get the word out about this movie. Yes, well, I think there's a lot of us that are very keen to see unplanned in Australian cinemas and to have the opportunity not just to go ourselves, but to have friends and others to go and see it, the movie as well. I think, you know, there's so much actually in the movie itself. It's a really important message for people to know that there is hope, you know, if they're feeling stuck and feel like they have to have an abortion, that there are groups that are out there to help them, you know, that adoption is a valuable option if they're not in the circumstances where they can keep the baby. And lots of people would love to adopt a child and don't have that opportunity because there's not enough children that need to be adopted. And so, and I guess the other thing that strikes me is I always think of children as a responsibility. You know, when you have a child, that's a responsibility that you have to love and to care. And the unborn children, they are the most vulnerable in our society. And we have a responsibility to stand up and to fight on their behalf for their protection. Yes, I'd certainly agree with that. And I'd also say they're a blessing. I mean, obviously, pregnancy is not always planned, but at the end of the day, children are always a, a blessing. And even though it can be difficult at the beginning, uh, most of the time it, it works out. Well, and the other thing is we have to look at by dehumanising babies in the womb, we're saying this group of people has no value. And where do we decide, at what point do we decide that they now have value when they're born? And, you know, there's even bills to say, well, if a baby is aborted but they're born alive, they don't have to try and help that baby who's born alive, you know? And the cruelty and the inhumanity that goes along with this is just incredibly sad. Yeah, unfortunately, we have gone way... It's gone from just aborting, a, as they'd say, a clump of tissues to a fully formed fetus. And so, some of the, the the stories that you hear of, like, these... And also the, the pro-abortion activists justifying uh, post-birth abortions. It's... I can't believe we've got to this stage. No, I really can't believe we've got to this stage too. <clears throat> I think... There will come a time when we will go, what were people ever thinking when they allowed this to happen? 
Well, I'm hoping that a, a turning point comes in Australia uh, very soon. Uh, though it's, we're in the middle of the federal election, well, it's, it's a couple of days away, uh, but there's, there's not really much choice between the, the, the major parties, unfortunately, on issues such as this. Yes, I think obviously Liberal has a much pro, a much clearer pro-life policy than the Labor Party. I actually feel really concerned for our nation if Labor wins this particular government on many levels. And one of them is that they do plan to have abortions funded in all public hospitals. Yes, Labor are definitely worse on this, but I don't think the, the Liberal Party either has much of a spine when it comes to, to this, unfortunately. Yeah, I actually have spoken to a few people who I know are pro-life within the Liberal Party, but I don't know if their policy is really clear or not. Uh, there's definitely some uh, some good ones there, and they they should definitely be uh, supported. Now, uh, Ballarat, it's a what's well, it's a red. Uh, town, uh, it's a safe Labor, and uh, obviously you, you continue your, your activism uh, and your information sessions here. Uh, what, else, what have you been up to since we last spoke? Well, at the moment I'm supporting the Australian Conservatives in this election, so I know Kevin Bailey is a good pro-life champion. Um, he would also stand for traditionally conservative values. And so I've really decided to get behind that campaign. We need good men and women in the Senate who are going to stand up for traditional family values, for life, for pro-choice. Yeah, if the polls are right, we need a, a firewall in that, that Senate to block uh, Labor and the Greens agenda. We certainly do. So um, some of the things that I've seen written regarding Labor's agenda for gender and sexuality is actually pretty concerning. You know, the plans to roll out school programs such as Safe Schools, I think Safe Schools is actually only at the tip of the iceberg of the amount of things that they're planning. So me just saying I believe that boys are boys and girls are girls could actually in the future get me fired from a job um, I've already been de-accredited because I refuse to teach gender fluidity and I actually do have that in writing. And so I just think under a Labor government, things are going to get just so much worse. Well, they're talking about introducing more hate speech laws and we're, we're lucky at the moment that even showing this movie is, is not considered hate speech. It's really concerning that, you know, not... Not only are these view, views considered socially unacceptable, but they want to now make it illegal, so you can't even say, say anything on this. Well, I think one of the issues they have is when you do present the science of the other side, when you look at the science, you know, boys have certain chromosomes, girls have certain chromosomes. That's very threatening when you present these truths. And so the only way they can stop those truths from being presented presented is by consistently pushing anyone out of the industry or by consistently saying that's hate speech so you can't even have that discussion. And the left has been very effective in shutting down the truth by using anti-discrimination and hate speech kind of laws. Yes, they've been relentless, but that's a whole other topic. Well, I've enjoyed uh, seeing you again today and being back in Ballarat. I, I lived here for, for three years, so coming here, it's always a walk down uh, memory lane, and it's been good to catch up.